Hi, and welcome to the next video on intracellular accumulations. Intra means within. Cellular obviously refers to the cell, and accumulations is a substance that is accumulating um, within the cell. So that's what we're going to talk about is how um, substances accumulate within the cell. Now this can be a very useful um, you know, kind of a morphological change is what we can see the process that cells are in. You know, remember in the last or a couple of video, videos ago, we talked about pathogenesis, and pathogenesis is the mechanism by which A is converted to B, which is converted to C, which is converted to D, etc. And then you can just go on from there. <clears throat> well, intracellular accumulations. Well, we can we we know that. You know, everything starts at a bio, biochemical or a, a molecular level and then converts and then we can see it over time up to a gross macroscopic um, pers uh, morphology or, or perspective or appearance. So intracellular accumulations is <clears throat> a sign of where the disease is at along this pathway. And it's different for each diseases but we can kind of tell, okay, so this is accumulating, uh, we start to see this in a, under a microscope, so we know that the disease is up to this point or to this point. So there's three main ways in which um, the cell that accumulations can occur, or two or three classifications. And they are a normal substance that is produced at a normal or an increased rate, but the metabolic uh, activity or processes of the cell are inadequate to um, to keep up with uh, the supply. Endogenous substance accumulates. So endogenous means from made within. Um, a, and an example of is a genetic or acquired defects in its folding, packaging, transport, and secretion. And we'll talk about these in detail. And the third one is exogenous substance that is deposited or accumulates within the cell. Exogenous means from without. So let's go through each one of these. So if I have a normal cell here, <coughs> normal cell, cell here, I have the nucleus, I have some organelles out here this is a, let's just say this is a mitochondria and let's say this is a lysosome um, you know cells produce stuff that's the whole job of some cells is just to produce they're like a manufacturing plant you know that produces cell phones for example you know if you have a manufacturing plant over here and it produces cell phones That's all it does all day is just produce cell phones. And within this process, um, <clears throat> within this um, company, you know, you, the there's you know departments. There's one department that um, puts the cell phones together, cell phone production. There's another you know department one, department two for example. Um, attaches, you know, attaches face plates and different designs. Department three goes through quality control. QA, quality, oh, QC, <laughs> rather, quality control. So you can see that you know within the manufacturing of cell phones, there are certain departments, and each department kind of has to do its own thing, and each department is dependent on the the previous department to do its job, or they're not going to have any work to do. That's the same thing in the cell. Everything starts in the nucleus. The DNA is converted to RNA, and then the RNA comes out here and makes. Um, is converted to proteins. Proteins are then packaged up and shipped off, um, shipped off out, out into the cell. And this is a whole process. So, you know, 
let's say that the cell, for example, has an increased demand or the tissues around it has an increased demand for um, substance, you know, some uh, A, A substance. Okay. <clears throat> um, but then, you know, it starts producing, it starts producing, it starts producing it, but then around, but then around the cell, uh, the cell is starting to make, you know, the, uh, at a normal rate or at a increased rate starts to make substance A, but the tissues say, oh, actually, I'm not ready for all this and I can't consume the substance A that you're producing. Well, then the cell doesn't get the message and still keeps, still keeps um, working, and then A starts to build up. You see A starting to build up in the cell, substance A starting to build up and then you can start then you start seeing little little pockets of A and under the microscope you'd be able to see this in some cases that substance A is accumulating within this cell and an example of that is a fatty liver and we'll talk about in the later in the video we're going to talk exactly about what is fatty liver and exactly what happens so on to the next one endogenous substance so an endogen, endogenous substance is kinda like the exact it, this this example or classification is almost exactly like the normal substance and, and this analogy over here of this manufacturing company that's making cell phones um, it's almost the same thing but then there's a genetic or acquired defect so some some somehow the DNA I'm just going to blow this up. This is the nucleus. Nucleus. And you got the uh, DNA in here. DNA. Somehow this this DNA got got damaged somehow or there's an acquired defect. Let's say this is the cell out here. there's you know there's a you know some organelle out here and this this uh organelle got damaged somehow um so like department d got damaged if you will because you know the nucleus is is department 1 for example and let's say this was department 2 department 2 got damaged somehow it's taken out well then in this process of excreting or producing these uh, proteins or these molecules to be shipped off to other parts of the body this department 2 is out you know it can't work so then you have this from right here you have everything that department 1 is producing you know in this process you have um, the cell phone production you have it just starts accumulating here so you have, let's just say, substance B starts accumulating because department two is damaged and it can't it can't um, convert um, substance B to you know substance F, for example, to be secreted outside outside the cell. Okay, another example is you know, and these these are the kind of the classifications that where damage can happen folding you know uh, packaging if the if some hormone or some protein is, is supposed to be packaged up in department 2 department 2 is taken out because of an acquired defect or something then packaging won't happen transportation or secretion you know the cell is a, is a relatively a big um, apparatus compared to a little you know my a little protein so that the cell produces so you know if you have the nucleus here and this is the outside of the cell I mean this this little protein has got to you know the message has got to get sent over to department 2 and then you know which is right here and then department 3 over here for example and then it's got to get transported over here and then it's got to get secreted out here 
So in this process, under this transportation process, let's say one of the, you know, and in my cellular biology videos, we're going to talk more about this, but let's just say one of the transportation trucks, you know, we got a flat tire. Flat tire. I know transportation trucks do not exist inside the cell, but <laughs> for an example, you know, if you can't transport, you know, your your product from from department two to department three, you know, or if it's a conveyor belt, if there's a big long conveyor belt, like in a manufacturing plant, then you know, let's say you know the belt broke in half right here. Well, then you can't get the product from department two to department three. And there's whole mechanisms on ways that um, you know things are transferred to one another throughout the cell. And all these departments are just organelles, you know, are, are analogous to organelles inside inside the the cell, which is like a Golgi apparatus, uh, an endoplasmic reticulum. All these are just um, organelles within the cell. And then you know there's a whole process by which things are secreted from cells you know into the bloodstream or to adjacent cells or whatever and let's say you know that this this process is taken out well all of these you know folding packaging transportation and secretion problems are going to cause a backup and acute and, and stuff's going to start accumulating inside the cells and let's move on to our last one exogenous substance is deposited and accumulated so let's say I have a cell here inside my lung. <clears throat> let's say this is a lung cell. Or a cell that is located within the lung. Let's do that. That's probably more precise. Located inside lung. This cell is located inside the lung. And let's say I work in a coal mine. And I am um, you know, working and I'm harvesting coal so that you know we can heat our houses and, and all these things. <clears throat> and I, I'm breathing in all that coal dust inside, uh, inside my lungs. There's this cell. And let's say his job is to remove stuff that I breathe in that's damaging or not normal. So I got these little particles of coal dust. This is coal dust. And this cell, you know, reaches out and engulfs and it brings this inside the cell. Brings this little coal dust because coal dust inside your lungs is not normal. So you have these cells that are that are you know gobbling up all this coal dust that you're breathing breathing in, and then you start accumulating all this coal dust. So the coal dust is now inside your lung, and you have you know over time, say you work in the coal coal factory or the coal mines for you know 20, 30 years, you're going to have a lot of cells with a lot of coal dust accumulating inside this. And this is um, this is an example of exogenous substance that is being deposited within your cell, or that accumulates within the cells. And you know some stuff, you know, like if, for example, um, you know we have another immune cell, and then you have a bacteria. You have a bacteria out here, you know. Well, this cell, let's say he just gobbles up this whole bacteria, and this bacteria is brought inside the cell. And these are nucleuses. Um, well, this cell has the capacity to destroy this and to excrete it, if you will. You know, it, you know, this this bacteria in his all his broken up parts exits the cell. Well, then the exogenous substance never gets really accumulated within the cell because it can eject it out, you know. Um, this stuff, the cell doesn't want to throw it out back into the body because it's coal dust and it's abnormal. So we're going to talk about some examples now of each type of 
each type of classification. So to review just real quick, we have a normal substance that is being produced, but the metabolic um, processes to consume that um, product or, or that substance is deficient in some way. So st the cell starts accumulating uh, a normal a normal biological process, uh, substance. An endogenous substance accumulates because of some genetic or acquired defect in its folding, packaging, transport, or secretion mechanisms. And then the exogenous substance is deposited and accumulated within the cell. So let's talk about some examples. Actually, instead of doing the examples in this video, I'm going to make another video on the examples because this video is getting kind of long. So we'll see you in the next video when we'll talk about examples of intracellular accumulations.